Good Day Columbus on ABC6. Hey, 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 back up, back up, back up, don't do that, don't do that. Body camera video released by CPD. An officer recorded punching a man in the street. What it shows that was missing from that now viral cell phone footage. Neighbors not happy in Hilliard. Who's concerned about a business taking over an old church? And let's take you to Iowa live this morning. The state's caucus isn't until next February, but candidates are already invading the state. The four people from both parties paying Iowans a visit today. Good morning to all of you. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday. It is June 11th. Happy to be with you this morning. I'm Jessica Ralston and I'm Kurt Ludlow. Good to be with you. Let's get right to that new video showing what led up to a Columbus police officer punching a man. This morning we now have the body cam footage from officers showing the confrontation. Mike McCarthy has been watching this for us frame by frame. He is live at police headquarters with what the new video reveals. This new video shows what happened on the south side of Columbus from multiple points of view. What you were about to see is a man named Jonathan Robinson get punched. He told me he got involved and ran towards officers concerned for the safety of his wife and kids. This morning, officials here at the Columbus Division, our police are letting this video speak for itself. Hey, 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 Get back! Or what? Get back! Or what? Get back! Or what? Get back! Police initially responded to the area of Heil Avenue Friday afternoon on a report of a shooting. Officers focused that investigation on a nearby house, and cell phone video from a bystander shows Robinson's wife holding their two kids approaching that same house. And as Robinson steps in, Police are stopping her from getting closer to that house. In court documents, officers wrote that Robinson took what they described as a fighting stance. Here's that confrontation again, this time from the vantage point of Officer Anthony Johnson, who first shoves and then hits Robinson. Hey, 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 back up, back up, back up, don't do that, don't do that, get on the ground, get on the ground, get on the ground. Robinson wound up being arrested there on the scene. He was charged with disorderly conduct and obstructing official business. Both of those are misdemeanors. The situation does calm down, and we have cruiser footage as well showing Robinson in the back of that cruiser talking to police in what appears to be a much more friendly conversation as both he and police discuss exactly what they both just went through. Columbus police say no additional information about what happened is going to be released until an ongoing internal investigation is complete. Jessica and Kurt, we don't yet have an exact timeline for how long that will take, but we'll keep you updated as we learn more. In the meantime, Columbus police released a total of just more than 49 minutes of video showing what happened before and after that confrontation. You can watch it all. Just go to abc6onyourside.com, click on this top story. Guys, the video is embedded right there in the text of the story. Back to you. And if you follow ABC6 on Twitter, you saw our posts with Columbus Police's body cam video. See stories like these as they happen by making sure you hit the follow button. We are at WSYX6. Buck. Good morning, everyone. Time now is 6 oh, well, almost 4, which means the sun's been up for two minutes and the sun is up until 9 p.m. today. 48 degrees in Fayette County, 47 in Athens County. A little pink there to the sky this morning. Really nice sunrise, and you can see that the eastern part of the state is reporting that sun's up already. Still not quite, though, in the western Ohio. Give it another minute or two. That'll start changing. But for the day today, we warm up to 76 for the high, mostly sunny skies. Grab the sunglasses. You will definitely need those today as you are heading out the door. And the other key factor is that the humidity is going to be so low today. Pleasant, refreshing criteria. Now it starts getting up into this bit humid range by the time that we get into the weekend. So enjoy it while it's here. Can't stress it enough. Today, in my opinion, is a 10 out of 10. Enjoy the beautiful day today. Coming up, we go break down when the rain returns and also get you your first round of birthday shout outs. Right now, it's going to check the roads with Kate. All righty, good morning, everybody, and happy Tuesday. We are moving right along this week. Actually, really not anything has changed since the last time we talked to you. We're seeing everybody 
at the speeds for the most part that they should be. I will say that we've been at 46 and under for the majority of the morning on the north side. No construction right now in that area that I'm able to see on our cameras. We don't have anything reported uh, according to ODOT, so we may just be a little off when it comes to our speeds. But it does look like fr folks are moving freely in that area, so there's not a lot of worry about right now. As for your live camera, 70 at James Road, westbound lane starting to build on the east side. Those eastbound lanes, barely anybody in them this morning. You can see that it is shaping up to start uh, to be a beautiful day this morning. We've got the sun up and uh, folks are flowing freely. So 70 up at Polaris Parkway, the same thing. Those north and southbound lanes looking decent. Not really seeing one side building more than the next. But uh, we don't have any reports of accidents at this time. So hopefully it stays that way through the good majority of the morning. It is 605. People in Hilliard want to make sure their voices are heard as the city considers putting a funeral home in their neighborhood. They packed a city council meeting last night debating the future of an unused church. You see it there, Old Parkside Community Church on Frizzell Road near Hyde Park Drive. Now the plan would be to have the building turned into a Jerry Spears funeral home by rezoning the land. Some people say the home would be an asset to the city, while others are concerned about traffic and home values. A parking lot with dead people. This is ridiculous. We are Hilliard people. We are born and raised Hilliard. Um, I was born 1741 Shady Brook Lane, Timberbrook. To keep our residential area residential. Uh, we don't doubt that this is a great family run business with roots in Hilliard. Um, we think that's awesome, but it's just not the right location. If it does go in, the funeral home would have services only, no embalming or cremation. The Spears family says it's made changes already requested by the community. Council is planning a third hearing on this and could vote at that meeting. The soonest would be a week from Monday. A former Cleveland Brown star could spend the rest of his life in prison. He was just found guilty of raping a 58-year-old homeless woman in California, along with several claims from other women, some dating back 16 years. Kellen Winslow Jr. still faces more charges this morning. A jury is deliberating two more counts of rape involving a hitchhiker and an unconscious teenage girl. Convictions on those charges would carry a life sentence. We posted about this story on the ABC6 Facebook page. It's your way to sound off on top local and national headlines. All you have to do is like us, WSYX ABC6. We are still a long way away from the 2020 presidential election, but Iowa without a doubt becoming a battleground. Sure is. President Trump and three Democratic candidates will visit Iowa today. The president will speak at a renewable energy event before going to a Republican Party fundraiser. Former Vice President Joe Biden, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, and Senator Cory Booker will also hold campaign events. The Pride Parade just four days away. CPD will have extra officers on hand. And after the break, how officers plan to keep everyone safe with a major jump in attendees. And traffic light on your Tuesday morning. Kate is tracking any problem spots that might pop up. And if you're heading out of town, a look at the airport commute in just about 10 minutes. Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Gardening forecast for the day today. It's going to be beautiful to be outside. You might need to water. We're mostly sunny today. A few showers do sneak in here late tomorrow and a better chance for rain by the time that we get into Thursday with some scattered showers and storms. We'll break down your full 70 forecast and time out exactly when the rain arrives. Coming up, Jess. Alrighty, Buck. Well, since we have a couple of great days ahead of us, make sure you get outside, take some pictures, maybe a video especially of your pets. You know, we love the pets around here. Then send them to us using the ABC6 app. Just hit the chime in button. Your photos and videos might end up here on Good Day Columbus. All right, you know Pride Week is underway here in the city, and CPD says officers are ready to keep everybody safe. They're not going to give specifics about the number of officers who will be out for this weekend's festivities, but there will be a lot of officers in downtown Columbus. Organizers want everyone to be safe, especially since they're estimating more than 12,000 marchers are expected in the parade this year. And get ready for some drama. A new face is about to join the cast of The Real Housewives. Let's take you to the Big Apple. We're talking about the New York City Housewives franchise. Even if you don't know her name, you'll probably know her famous husband. Americans of a certain age, they say a house hearing seemed like a trip to the past for them. Sinclair investigative reporter James Rosen explains why. 
In an effort to keep alive their impeachment drive against President Trump, Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee turned to a figure from history, former White House counsel John Dean, who testified against President Nixon and his top aides in the Watergate scandal and who was eager to draw parallels today. Mr. Mueller addresses the question of whether President Trump dangled pardons or offered favorable treatment to Michael Cohn, Paul Manafort. In one of my last conversations with Richard Nixon, he told me uh, in a very peculiar manner, getting up from his desk in the EOB office and going across the office and in a stage whisper saying to me, John, I made a mistake in talking to Colson about clemency for Hunt, didn't I? Dean's testimony was designed to persuade Democratic leaders of the political viability of impeachment proceedings against Mr. Trump on the basis of information about alleged obstruction of justice by the president that was contained in the report sent by former special counsel Robert Mueller to Attorney General William Barr. C. Boyden Gray, White House counsel under the first President Bush, argued House Democrats need to recognize that the special counsel was always a creature of, not independent from, the Justice Department. If they want, they can pass legislation that would allow for an independent counsel like was um, set up under Whitewater and, and uh, Watergate and, 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 and work it that way. But this is a domestic, uh, domestic, I mean it's an executive branch investigation by the department and the department doesn't work for, uh, for Congress. Democrat Gerald Nadler, chair of the Judiciary Committee, announced that he and Attorney General Barr have come to terms on a deal for members of the panel to gain access to some of Robert Mueller's secret files. In return, the Democrats will hold off on a planned vote to hold the Attorney General in contempt of Congress. On Capitol Hill, James Rosen. Now, one exchange during that hearing is going viral this morning. It is between John Dean and Matt Gates, a GOP representative from Florida. Gates tries to question why Dean is even there and ends up confusing a lot of people in the process. Here's a clip from his YouTube page. To the Mueller report? I, I think if you recall the first thing I said, I'm not here as a fact witness. You're here to provide historical context. Exactly. And throughout history, you accuse presidents of acting like Richard Nixon and you make money off of it, right? Not all presidents, no. No, but a few more Those than Those who do act like him, I pointed out. Let me ask you this question. How do Democrats plan to pay for Medicare for all? I'm sorry? How do, well, I figured if we were going to ask you about stuff you don't know about, we'd start with the big stuff. So do you know how they plan to pay for Medicare for all? Uh, who? The Democrats or which candidate or can well, you be more specific? Let's get specific to Nixon since that appears to be why you're here. If we turned the lights off here and maybe lit some candles, got out a Ouija board, we could potentially raise the specter of Richard Nixon. <laughs> I, I doubt that. Well, it, it, seems to be, it seems to be the objective. You know, here we Okay, controversial stuff on Capitol Hill for sure. I, I don't mean, know where that was going. That's a little either. here and yeah, there and yeah. everywhere. Just hold on to the Ouija board and see where it takes you. <laughs> I guess so. Don't get me near a Ouija board. Do not I, like those things. Very afraid of them. Do not no, want to see one. Really? Would never keep one in my house. No, no way. Ever done it? Ye yes. Years ago as a kid. Slumber party, especially creepy, all. weird stuff. And then I saw The Exorcist, and that was it. No more oh, ever. I've never done a Ouija board. No, don't do it. It's freaky. Push well, someone it. always, you don't know, pushes do it. it. Don't do it. That's what, hey, is that what happens? Kurt, when you're like eight and you see your friend sh shoving I the thing know. and then says she didn't Some do it. Creepy stuff <laughs> happening. <laughs> we should do it. No. Yes. I'm not getting involved. All right, let's in get to weather. Board. If you want to head outside today. I predict that it will be the best day of the entire week to go to some of the amusement parks or just destinations around the state. So if you are looking for something to do with the kids today, it is going to be a beautiful day. Cedar Point getting up to about 73, Kings Island about 75, the wilds looking great, no chance of any rain in any of the locations. Beautiful today, sunny, dry and mild. Tomorrow we are dry the majority of the day, but by the evening, a little spotty rain does try to sneak in. Thursday's looking wet, and then uh, Friday we're dry before some on and off rain returns heading into the weekend. So here's a look from uh, Ohio State's webcam out on the west side of campus. They're 49 degrees currently. Winds are calm, so that's pretty nice as you're heading out the door. A nice, cool, calm, crisp start to the day. 47 in Zanesville, 46 currently in Chillicothe. I kind of jumped ahead there. With Let me go back real quick. We're actually going to be warming up beautiful today. A lot of sunshine, 76 by the time we get to 5 o'clock here in Columbus. So Futurecast today starting out in the low 50s. We're at 72 by lunchtime, eventually 76 by 5 o'clock. Again, beautiful, sunny, beautiful day all together.
Can't stress it enough. Now tomorrow morning we start out a little warmer. 55 for the morning low. Increasing clouds through the day. Noon we're still dry, but watch in southern Ohio by 5 o'clock. Rain starting to arrive. Could see a couple of rain showers after 5 p.m. tomorrow. So the majority of the day will be dry tomorrow. Just a slight chance for some late evening rain showers. On and off showers and thunderstorms on Thursday. I think more showers than thunderstorms. One big factor is the fact that it's going to be the coolest day on the extended forecast, 67 for the high. So you don't have that heat to help fuel those thunderstorms since it's going to be so cool. 74 on Friday and dry, but we get into more scattered rain later Saturday and then on and off on Sunday. Uh, Sunday is the warmest day, 83 degrees for the high there. Birthday shout outs and a huge happy birthday to Jason. Happy birthday to you and the other, other people celebrating today. We've got Jason, Lynn, Georgia, Steve, Tika, Chloe, Akira, uh, Marjorie, Sydney, and Gary. Happy birthday to all of you. If you want to nominate someone, just go to my Facebook page or Twitter and find the post right at the top to click the link in the caption. Let's get a check of how things are shaping up out there on the roads right now with Katie. Yeah, looking right now, right by the airport exit, we are seeing those east and westbound lanes moving freely still at this time. Usually we start to see westbound slowing down probably in the next 15 to 20 minutes, but right now it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. However, that obviously could change very quickly, but right now we're seeing no de delays. So as you're making your way from 270 into the downtown area, you're not going to have any problems there. Big picture still showing that everybody's moving nicely there. We don't have any yellow. We haven't had any yellow on the map for a good portion of the morning and 33 coming down from Marysville as well as 33 coming up from Canal Winchester also moving nicely this morning. 161 westbound coming in from New Albany is still building and not yet slowing down. And as of right now, no reports of accidents on your roads. Well, it looks like a new face will be joining the cast of the Real Housewives of New York. This morning, the New York Post is reporting that Anthony Scaramucci's wife, Deidre, is in talks to join the Bravo reality show. Of course, you remember the Mooch as he was called, was the White House communications director for all of 10 days. Deidre filed for divorce in 2017 when she was nine months pregnant, but the couple ended up working things out. Interesting mm -hmm. to see that she'll be on reality TV. <laughs> you won't be watching, will you, Kurt? You know what, Katie and I are going to get you hooked. I'm t I promise <laughs> no we're going to get you to watch The Housewives. <laughs> All right, serious oh. business now. Several teens near Canton swept away in flooding and they needed to be rescued. And coming up at 630, new video of the rescue as those kids climb up hundreds of feet. But first, we're going to take you back in time. After the break, how you can watch lawmakers play some baseball today for free. right now and Ohio lawmakers are about to take some time away from the state house chambers to play a vintage baseball game. Cam Fontana is here with the scouting report and how you can attend. Hey. Good morning guys. So this is so much fun. Tonight for the ninth year in a row, vintage baseball returns to the state house. Not only do they play for bragging rights, there's actually a trophy for the winner. Here's some video from last year when the Ohio Village Muffets played in the game on the West Lawn. Now they use a rule book from 1860. If you've never seen a vintage baseball game spelled as two words, baseball, there are several rule changes. First off, the ball is pitched underhand from anywhere behind the pitcher's line. You also won't see any players wearing gloves because those weren't used by most baseball players until the mid 1890s. That makes it pretty tough for players to catch a fly ball. So a rule allowing a ball caught after one bounce to be an out is used and placed. Now we've gotten to play vintage baseball both with and against the Muffins. Clay Hall and Bob Kendrick joined me in a game last year during All-Star Week at Huntington Park. Unfortunately, those guys from the 1800s were really good yeah. and we lost. <laughs> but tonight the Muffins will face members of the General Assembly at 530. The game is free and there will even be a cannon firing demonstration before the first pitch to wake everybody up. So that is, was the best part. We did autographs. Yeah. Is the ball is the same like baseball? So it's about the same size, yeah. but it's softer. Okay. It's not as hard as like the Major League Baseball today with all the stitching. It's um, like a very worn leather. Yeah. A little bit squishier. Just mm -hmm. a little bit. Okay. It's interesting. Yeah. It's so much fun. Good times. Yeah. Well, alrighty. We'll all right. Back. That's not that easy. <laughs>
watching Good Day Columbus on ABC6. And good morning. Thanks for waking up with us on this Tuesday, June 11th. I'm Kurt Ludlow and I'm Jessica Ralston. Yes, happy Tuesday morning. You're gonna be very pleased with the day ahead. We're ready for the sunshine, Buck. And it is out and it is going to be a just beautiful day. Good morning. Time now 630 and you can see we're sunny in Fayette County, Chillicothe and Athens this morning and the temperatures have been dipping down into the mid 40s in some spots. This is the sunrise time lapse out from Licking County and it's just a beautiful morning. There's the sun coming up above the horizon, so you will need the sunglasses for the day today. Grab those as you are heading out the door. We are dealing with completely clear skies across the entire state with temperatures in the upper 40s and low 50s. By 8 a.m. we'll probably already have warmed up to about 54 by that point. Dry all day long. We get to 76 by 4 p.m. and still staying rather mild heading into this evening. Now, if you want to work outside in the yard, maybe work in the garden some today and tomorrow, pretty good days to do that. Getting into a little bit of rain late tomorrow and then Thursday is going to be a wet day for you on and off with some scattered showers and storms. Friday, we're drying out once again before more rain returns for the weekend. But again, we'll be timing out this rain with an updated future cast coming up in a little bit. Right now, it's going to check of how things are shaping up on your roads with this Tuesday morning commute, Katie. All right, Saja, adjust the cameras a little bit. They're all turned around and not in areas that, that we typically see for our mornings. But this is right now looking at 70 at Mound Street. You can see that those east and westbound lanes are still light as folks are making their way in and out of the downtown area. As for our drive times, when folks are coming on in from the east, we're seeing about 45 miles per hour. You're going to start to see folks slowing down, particularly around Bryce Road and then coming on in towards the Miller Kelton area in the downtown area. It looks like it's going to take you about 16 minutes from that stretch 256 again all the way into the downtown. But your bigger picture here showing that the only yellow that we're seeing is in that downtown area. Everything else isn't green and good standing really hasn't been a busy morning so far. So hopefully that continues throughout the morning commute. All right, Katie, thank you. 632 now. Five teenagers are OK this morning after being rescued from a storm drain near Canton. All right, take a look at some of this video from Massillon this morning. Are you guys? Are you guys all right? One of the teens was swept away in a flash flood at this park. Four friends went in to help and then everyone was stuck. The one teen who did not jump in called 911. Yeah, by the time officers arrived, some of the teens had been swept into a drainage tunnel more than 100 feet down. They used a life preserver and a rope to pull two of the kids up. One of them was found at the other end of the tunnel a mile away. The fire chief there tied himself up. He went into that tunnel about 200 feet to rescue the last two teens. No one was seriously hurt. They're all back safe and sound with their parents this morning. What a story to tell. Mm -hmm. Well, this morning, the state of Ohio is asking for federal aid to help victims of those recent tornado outbreaks, and the request comes from the governor himself. In a 30 page letter, Mike DeWine wants FEMA's help in 10 counties. Most are in western Ohio, but Hawking, Perry, Pickaway, and Muskingum are also on that list. FEMA hopes to get their letter to President Trump quickly so he can sign off on federal disaster aid funding, but not all 10 counties could be approved. They could make that designation, for example, for one county, three counties, four counties, 10 counties, or none. Last week, FEMA surveyed 1,800 buildings, including homes, businesses, and more. A spokesperson says there's no specific timeline on when the aid, if approved, would actually arrive. If the president okays funding, FEMA teams would come back to Ohio to document all damage and answer questions from people who are working to rebuild. Fresh off his federal funding request, the governor will be in Washington, D.C. to make an announcement. It's all happening in just about seven hours. Let's take you live to our nation's capital on this Tuesday morning. Governor Mike DeWine will be joined by the president of Jobs Ohio, the U.S. Commerce Secretary, and the CEO of an overseas company. They'll be announcing a new manufacturing and logistics hub somewhere in the Buckeye State. Hmm. It's still not clear what this company does or where it will be located, so stay with us. We'll let you know. Columbus police are making an effort to become more diverse. Today, the department's hosting a recruitment webinar. They want more female officers on the force. Yeah, Alexis Moberger joins us live from the newsroom to explain why this push is underway. 
Yeah, good morning, Curtin Jess. Well, right now, women make up only a small percentage of the Columbus Police Department. But today, they're making an effort to try and change that imbalance. But first, take a look at this. Right now, women make up only about 11% of the Columbus Division of Police. Right here, you'll see it on your screen. But in the city of Columbus, females make up about 51% of the population. But nationwide, we only see about 12% of police officers who are female. But tonight, Columbus Police will have an online webinar as an effort to recruit more female officers. But not only will the webinar go over steps to becoming an officer, it will also talk about the history of women in policing. Recruitment officers told us female officers are more likely to use more de-escalation tactics. They also say women can be helpful when working with people who've experienced sexual assault or domestic violence. It's actually a webinar for anyone that's trying to get on the police department. However, we are focusing on women. Uh, we are still a minority in the police department, and yeah. we'd like to see an increased strength with, with females. The webinar will go live at 6.30 tonight. You can find that webinar on their Facebook page. It will be part of a Facebook Live. But Kurt Jess, if you want to have a little bit more information just about the recruitment process, just head over to the City of Columbus, this web page, and just go to the Division of Police Recruitment. Here there's even a video that it just explains a little bit more of what's expected. So again, tonight at 6.30, it will be a Facebook Live. Back to you. All right, Alexis, thank you. 636 now this morning. Pike County's Board of Health is asking an Ohio senator to intervene and stop construction at a nuclear waste facility. They point out that more than 300 people claim that they got cancer from exposure. Mm. It's on the top of 150 names the health department had already received. So we've been telling you about this investigation. It started after enriched uranium was detected near Zanz Corner Middle School, forcing that building to be closed down. A third party firm is investigating samples across the county. Senator Sherrod Brown sent us a statement. It says in part, it's clear we need to bring an independent third party that the community can trust. The Department of Energy has committed to do that, and I am working to make sure it's done right. You can read more about the contamination concerns in Pike County on the ABC6 app. We've been following this story for weeks since the air monitors first detected potentially dangerous elements. Just search for WSYX to download. A famous face from Columbus is on the cover of The New Yorker. Check out Nina West, the magazine calling her one of the most powerful drag queens in the country. And she's about to get a big honor today in the short north. And let's take you live to West Palm Beach, Florida. Soak up that sun. They are expecting rain and a high of 89 degrees. Buck has our forecast for your Father's Day weekend coming up. Aimed for Pride Week. Check out the photo that drag queen Nina West posted. Hull Alley in the short north will be known as Nina West Way. You'll also notice two extra words on the sign. They read, be kind. Nina is the grand marshal of this year's parade. She's also on the cover of the next issue of The New Yorker. The magazine actually has 37 different covers featuring drag queens. The editors call Nina one of the most powerful drag queens in the country. A Boston sports legend is waking up in Beantown this morning, still recovering from a serious gunshot wound. His former team, the Red Sox, flew him in for more treatment. David Ortiz was shot in the Dominican Republic late Sunday night. Doctors say the bullet went through his stomach and damaged several organs. The Red Sox held a moment of silence last night. Here's the front page of today's New York Post. The newspaper is reporting this was a hit job. Their sources say the detectives are even looking at the possibility that a police officer in the Dominican Republic was hired as one of the hitmen. A Dayton family's dream vacation turns into a nightmare. Oh my God, I cannot lose my son. I cannot lose my son. All right, what's your son's name? Swim. After the break, the rescue that felt like an eternity for this Ohio mother. 641 right now on your Tuesday. Now your roadways are starting to build a little bit and we're starting to see some areas slow down, but nothing that's really going to impact your morning commute so far. These are the two busiest areas that we're seeing right now. 71 at Greenlawn Avenue and then hopping on over to 33 at Hamilton Road as folks are making their way up to 270. We're breaking down some of the other busiest areas on the roadways coming up after the break. Right now, no accidents. Stay with us. We have plenty more Good Day Columbus.
scariest moment of their lives when their son started drifting off to sea on an inflatable raft. Can you imagine? Yeah. Listen to the moments the mom calls 911 while watching him get farther and farther away. Oh my God, I cannot lose my son. I cannot lose my son. Right, what's he your son's his name? Limb. He's getting so far out so quickly. We need someone out there quickly. Wow. Jill O'Connor and her family were visiting the ocean for the very first time. They were in North Carolina in just a matter of seconds. She says her son Declan was just ripped away. It took about 15 minutes for rescue crews to get in a boat and save him. Jill says those moments felt like forever. It definitely felt like an eternity and you look back and seven minutes seems like nothing. But when you're watching your son drift farther and farther away from the beach, it's it's a long time. The O'Connors are warning parents not to bring inflatable rafts to the beach. First responders say if you see one of them in the ocean, don't be afraid to call 911. You can hear more from the family this morning on Good Morning America right here on ABC6. All right, grab the tissues. An airman from here in Ohio just received a very special welcome home after being deployed since January. Here it is. Go get your dad. Go get your dad. How about that? That's Lieutenant Colonel Sal Friedman just arrived back in Dayton and you see there was greeted at the gate by his wife and two sons and <laughs> they even wore matching military uniforms for the homecoming. That is cute. They couldn't wait to run up and say hi. Welcome home. Love it. All right, Katie, 8646. How's the traffic this morning? So we have our first accident reported this morning. This is going to be affecting US 62 in Johnstown at Shipley Road. So to get around this, you can take Van Fossen Road. But again, this is the latest accident for us to have on our maps this morning. Really, the only accident that's been reported since I have been in. As for your big picture, when it comes to your live roadways, 270 at Roberts Road, not too bad in those southbound lanes. Northbound lanes starting to get a little heavy, but still moving freely at this time. 670 at Fifth Avenue also seeing the same thing. We're pretty good as folks are moving away in those westbound lanes. Eastbound lanes are also slowing down just a bit. As for our map, you're seeing that, seeing that yellow that we just talked about there in those eastbound lanes. Westbound lanes heading into the downtown, still yellow right around Miller Kelton. And we are officially now in that yellow stretch out here coming on in from the east as folks are approaching Bright's Road in those 70 westbound lanes. As for some other areas, 71 northbound and Green Lawn, not too bad. Bad. Not the worst that we would see, but definitely starting to slow down as more folks are getting on the roadways just in that short stretch. So if you were heading out, some of your areas that you typically start to see delays in are happening right now. Be aware of that one accident we talked about on 62 in Johnstown. Otherwise, not a lot to talk about on your roadways. Buck. All right, thanks, Katie. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be a beautiful day outside today. Grab the sunglasses because the sun is going to be very bright today. If you need to work outside in the yard today, it's going to be great weather to do that. Same for the majority of the day tomorrow. We do get into some rain late in the day. Thursday is going to kind of be an iffy day with some on and off rain. Friday looking dry as well. Now heading into the weekend, though, more rain returning. You're out the door cast, though, this morning. Sunrise was at 6.02, and that is up until 9 p.m. today with temperatures warming up this morning to about 65 degrees already by 10 a.m. So warming up pretty quickly for us today. We're at 49 now, so we have dipped into the 40s here in Columbus with calm winds outside. Really nice start to the day. The other noticeable thing is that the fact that the dew point, the moisture in the air is really low, so it's going to feel refreshing and pleasant over the next four days. But that starts going up as we head into Saturday and especially by Sunday. Humidity really starting to move back in. The other nice thing is with lower humidity means that hair is a little bit more manageable rather than like yesterday where it was curly and frizzy because the dew points were in the mid to upper 60s. So. Futurecast today showing clear skies. I can show you the radar and satellite, but there's nothing on it for us. 72 at noon, eventually getting at about 76 by 5 o'clock. Now, late tonight, we could see a few clouds starting to move in. 7 a.m. tomorrow. Notice a couple of clouds out there. 7 a.m. tomorrow, mid-50s. So a little warmer tomorrow than today, but the clouds continue moving in. Rain in southern Ohio there by 5 o'clock moving in a little bit more by the time that we get to about 11 p.m. tomorrow. So a chance for some rain late tomorrow. Most of the day will be dry. Today we're dry all day long. Sunny and mild, 76 degrees for the high. Beautiful day. Tonight's mostly clear. You can leave the windows open. Overnight low in the mid-50s. And then tomorrow we bounce right back up to 78. Evening spotty rain. Otherwise, most of the day is dry with increasing clouds. On and off showers and a few rumbles of thunder Thursday. 
dry Friday before more rain returns later Saturday into your Sunday. All right, and speaking of Sunday, we are just about five days away from Father's Day. Good day. Columbus wants to help you get your dad the ultimate gift. We're giving away dinner for two at Bob Evans, two rounds of golf at Safari Golf Club in Powell, and a brand new gas grill. So here's what you need to do. Visit our website, click on contest, and then tell us why your dad deserves to win. We will reveal the winner on Friday morning. Good luck. The Golden State Warriors barely alive in the NBA Finals, but of course they're still fighting. The bad news is the odds for them to win the series just got much tougher. Stashing it up, Van Vliet in pursuit. Iguodala back out to Green. Thompson, one fake, one dribble, one shot. Got it! Golden State retakes the lead. That late three-pointer by Clay Thompson pushed Golden State ahead for good. They beat Toronto in Toronto, 106-105. The Raptors still lead the series three games, 2-2. Two, two. Now to the bad news if you're a Warriors fan. Kevin Durant returned to the court after being sidelined for more than a month with that calf injury. But in the second quarter, he planted his right foot and pop. Mm. Golden State's president of basketball operations holding back tears saying he should be blamed for mm -hmm. what happened. Let me tell you something about Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant loves to play basketball, and the people that questioned whether he wanted to get back to this team were wrong. And I'm not here to... He's one of the... He's one of the most misunderstood people. He's a good teammate. He's a good person. It's not fair. Well, Durant would be helped to the locker room and then leave the arena on crutches. He has an MRI today, and the team expects it to mm. confirm that he has a torn Achilles, which could see him sidelined for all of next season. It is not good. Mm -hmm. That is a devastating injury for an athlete. All right, Durant's Warriors teammates will be back at home for game six of the finals. That's Thursday night at nine. You can watch that game right here on ABC6. The time is 652. Ohio's governor set to ask for federal money to help people rebuild after the tornado outbreak. After the break, the one person who would still need to sign off on funding. That's in this morning's Good Day to Go. It is 6.55 and here's today's good day to go. Columbus police just released this body cam video showing another angle of a viral video the department investigating after an officer was recorded punching a man in the street. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine is requesting federal dollars to help statewide tornado victims. President Trump would need to sign off on funding through FEMA. And a beautiful start to the day. We are dry all day long today, but it'll return soon enough. Some rain returns later tomorrow. And we have gotten through the good majority of the morning without any accidents. This is the first one reported US 62 at Shipley Road. You can use Van Fossen Road to get around that instead. Uh, we do know that there are injuries involved in that, so it may be quite some time before they're able to clear it out of the way. As of today, a street in the short north is being renamed for Pride Week. Hull Alley will now be known as Nina West Way in honor of the drag performer who is this year's Grand Marshal. And former baseball star David Ortiz is in Boston this morning recovering from a gunshot wound. It happened Sunday night. He was flown there by his former team, the Red Sox. And that is your good day to go. This morning, Philadelphia's baseball broadcaster is probably still cleaning up <laughs> after being invaded by the team's mascot. So it all started when the Philly fanatic heard that one of them wanted some popcorn. Uh-oh. Oh, no. You did say you wanted popcorn before, didn't you? <laughs> what are you doing? He's drunk. <laughs> He's got to be drunk. He's Look just, at him. Just destroying our What booth. are you doing? <laughs> oh my goodness. Why do people like you? <laughs> He's something. Poor guy's really uh -huh. struggling there. Well, you can see obviously the mascot trips and messes with the banners and the broadcast booth. And I guess it's safe to say he got the popcorn he wanted. I wonder if it was extra <laughs> butter on it. What do you think? Put on that extra butter. Is there any other way? I don't put on butter. No? I got yelled at yesterday in the movie That's theater because I don't put on butter. You need to go out Who and yelled get at out you? here. Well, Dawn, she, I was like, I didn't put oh. on butter. She's like, what? She didn't yell at me. She's like, what? You know what you need to put in there? Some M&Ms. 
and butter. Oh. Great buffalo ranch sauce. No. See you on Fox 28. <laughs>